everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. My name is Hika, and I'm a creative strategist at Future Colossal. I get to work with different creative technologists and developers and design unique experiences using technology. It's essentially my job to take the technology capabilities of my team and figure out how we can use that to create an experience that no one has seen before. So what is Future Colossal? We're an experiential innovation lab, and we get to create very unique experiences in all these different mediums. We get to work in VR, MR, AR, motion reactive art installations. Every day we create unique experiences using technology. And today what I'll be talking to you about is how I design experiences using technology that are especially impactful from a strategist perspective. So what makes an experience impactful? What do I mean by impactful? I'll get into each of these individually, but a impactful experience really transports users. It helps them forget their everyday world. An impactful experience has a natural interaction that is free of confusion. An impactful experience entices further exploration and allows people to delve deeper into your experience. And an impactful experience drives home a takeaway message. I'm sure there's a lot of artists in here and also marketers in here and making sure people get the message is really crucial. And finally, an impactful experience creates an emotional connection with your experienced users. So for transporting users as a way that an experience is super impactful, it's something that is really exciting for people and really memorable if they really feel like they're somewhere very different. Uh, in this example, we wanted to create an experience for Tarzan, the Warner Brothers film, and we decided that we should really transport people to the jungle in Africa where Tarzan lives. So you can see it's a pretty small 10 by 10 shipping container, uh, but when people step inside and the door closes behind them, it's very dimly lit, it's very humid, there's mist as well, there's sounds of jungles and animals all around them, and there's these beautiful beams of light coming through the ceiling through these thick vines and branches, so it feels like the ceiling is very far away. And as it gets brighter and brighter, you see further out into the distance, and you realize it's really never ending. It's very vast forest where you feel like you're really lost inside. And we achieved this using mirrors, but we cut it and placed it in a way so that it never repeats itself, so it really feels never ending. So we used a lot of sensory experiences for this to really make it feel like you're transported somewhere else. And we also had a narrative to even further make you feel that, or make you forget rather that you're actually just in a shipping container. We had the sound of a gorilla coming closer and closer to you, running towards you, and it's really scary, it's very loud, and then it suddenly jumps behind you and the ground shakes with a huge boom. So seeing people come out of this experience super thrilled was really fun, especially because they're walking outside and one, one minute they were in a jungle and now they're just in their everyday world again. So that experience is really memorable for people. So transporting users is a great way to make an experience very impactful. Also, a natural interaction is really key, so people aren't worried if they're doing it right during the actual experience as well. Uh, in this particular example, we had a full uh, wall of projections that were fully interactive, and it was inside a really cute gingerbread house here in Madison Square Park around Christmas time. And uh, whether you're a child or an adult, you don't have to know anything about this experience to know how to use it. When you walk in, we have these visual cues that make you want to go towards this wall, and as soon as you're close enough, it already starts rewarding you and interacting with you. And you start moving around, and the new animations activate, you wave your hands. It's something that even a little kid can figure out. An impactful experience also entices further exploration. It's important to hook people, but once you have their attention, you want to give them the opportunity to really become fans of your experience. For this one, we were hooking people in really busy places in, on the streets of New York and LA, and uh, we did this with these very spooky, shadowy AI figures that would follow you as you're walking past this window. And uh, as soon as you turn around and look at it, it would either, uh, since it's AI, it would have a very different reaction every time. It would sometimes burst into flames, or it would run away, or turn into a bat, or even be eaten by a werewolf. So that initial hook is really exciting. And then if you want, there's all these different avenues where you can really further get into the experience. Uh, there's these peepholes that you can look inside, and one of them, uh, it senses when you're looking, so animation freaks out, uh, pops out at you so to, to freak you out a little bit. There's also these portraits that look like regular posters, but once you step in front of it, it comes to life. We even had a gift booth. So there are people who enjoyed this for 30 seconds, just walking by on the street and being kind of spooked out by this figure that's following you. And people even ha uh, hang out in front of this for 30 minutes. So it's something that is really good to keep in mind when you're designing an impactful experience. Also, an impactful experience to drive home a takeaway message. I'm sure we all agree that that's something that's really important in a lot of our pieces. And, uh, for this piece, this was for Oppenheimer Funds, and they wanted to show how the world has changed so much since 1957, but the way that indexes are weighted haven't changed at all, which is 
kind of ridiculous. So we made this fun experience uh, in Wall Street where we turned a window into a window into 1957 Wall Street. Uh, when you walk past this, um, you'd see Wall Street in black and white, see the, all the cool cars, and every person who walks in front of us would be turned into a banker from Wall Street. And the really poignant, poignant thing about this is that everybody would be turned into a white male banker because people of color were not represented at all during this time frame. So to make sure that it's not just an interesting experience that's kind of curious, we really made sure that we spelled it out for them so they got the message. So as they're interacting with it, we would have messages like uh, uh, um, challenge 1957 or challenge the status quo and explaining how things should change since 1957. And lastly, an impactful experience should create an emotional connection. This is a project I really love. Uh, it's for a great nonprofit called CEO Action. And their mission is to educate CEOs around the US about any racial biases or any um, uh, blind spots that they may have. And we wanted to tell the stories of people, of uh, uh, minorities, but we didn't want to just tell it to the CEOs. We really wanted to feel like a conversation. So we made this uh, really cool magic mirror where we had these sensors that would know when the CEO is standing in front of the mirror and about their approximate height as well. So as soon as the CEO stands in front of the mirror, uh, they would see their reflection and then there'd be a dramatic lighting change where, where they see their face in the reflection, it would then be the reflection of the minority who begins telling their story while looking into your eyes. So it really feels like a conversation and you're not just having video content just shown at you. So we're at Creative Tech Week today, which is awesome. And I think we all know that creative technologists make really unique experiences and some of the best artworks in my opinion. And I'm sure a lot of us also know that creative technologists face a lot of unique challenges as well. These are just some examples of some very traditional or mediums that we're familiar with. We know how to look at a painting or observe a sculpture or enjoy a concert. But even at these really familiar experiences, it can get really confusing. I get such a kick out of this. Uh, I got a lot of press coverage, but this is a totally normal gallery. And somebody dropped their glasses and everybody thought it was art. <laughs> so even in these regular experiences that people should know how to experience, user interpretation is really difficult. So what do you do when you have an experience that has novel technology, like a robotic arm that is motion reactive? People are not familiar with something like that. So that's a huge challenge for creative technologists when designing experiences. So what I want to talk to you about today is how you can train your users. You can't expect people to spend a lot of time figuring out how to interact with your experience. They're not going to read any instructions or anything like that. So you have to incorporate the training in the experience itself and reward them immediately as soon as they're doing the desired behavior. And before I get into the nitty gritty of everything, just a, a heads up that you can only control user interpretation to an extent, especially if you're an artist, people are going to interpret your art in a different way. But you can help guide them so people don't think that the glasses on the floor is your piece of work. So uh, here are five experience design techniques for an impactful experience. Uh, one is to instantly reward your users, tailor your design to your audience, Utilize the psychology of memory. I'll go into each of these individually. And use your test and apply those learnings. That can really make or break whether your experience is impactful or not at all. And also hide the technology. So for instantly rewarding people, uh, this is great for training people and making sure they know how to interact with your experience. But it's also important to make sure that people are engaged throughout the entire experience and not just at a finale at the end. Uh, this project in particular was for the Super Bowl last year in Minneapolis for Target. And they had this really awesome finale idea where we turn the locals who are there at the event into these Aurora Borealis themed pieces of art. And then that would be broadcasted at the top of the skyscraper. And people loved it so much. Uh, the locals and the people who are visiting, well, especially the locals who see the skyscraper every day, to see themselves on it was such an awesome experience for them. But we wanted to make sure that the actual process of capturing their uh, their movements was exciting as well. So the user experience was people run down this uh, miniature football field, they catch a ball, they spike it, and then they do their touchdown dance, and they get to see their touchdown dance in real time being turned into this Aurora Borealis themed art. And it kind of stole the show. A lot of people started lining up for this, um, just seeing the real time capture, and uh, it was fun. People would do the touchdown dance and be like, oh, that was great, and it'd be like, look up, and they'd be like, oh my god, I'm at the top of the skyscraper. So it's really important to think through every step and making sure you're, they're rewarded every time. So 
Otherwise, you might even miss a, a part of the process that could be the highlight of the experience. Also, make sure you tailor your design to your audience. This one is really important uh, in terms of making sure you're connecting properly with the people who will actually be experiencing your experience. And uh, at Future Colossal, we make a lot of custom photo booths. And uh, we did this one for the Mexican national team. And uh, we did a lot, a lot of research into them. They are super fans. They really, really love repping the Mexican national team. They even caused a miniature earthquake, earthquake at Russia FIFA last year. So they go hard. And one interesting thing that we found out about them was that their selfie culture is very different from the other audiences that we've made photo booths for. They don't really like the vanity of just having a photo of yourself. It feels awkward and kind of lonely to them. They much would rather have a, a photo with their best friend or a family member. So we made sure that this photo booth can accommodate uh, two people, change a lighting rig, and it turned out to be true. When we were live on site, people had the option of taking a photo by themselves if they wanted to, but almost everybody grabbed somebody up there with to take a photo together. Also, there's so many tips in psychology on how to make something memorable, so something that people can really hold on to. Uh, but these are the three that I really like to refer in experience design. Uh, one is that if you have a lot of messages that you want people to remember, make sure you prioritize and place them at the beginning and at the end of the experience, because they're much more likely to remember at the beginning and the end. And this even works for a string of numbers. You can literally spew out a string of numbers and people remember the first and last numbers. And also, people remember the feeling that the experience gave them way more than the message or any of the other details. So if you're planning an experience for climate change, for example, make sure that you're really planning out how you want people to feel at the end. Do you want them to be scared or do you want them to be angry or inspired and optimistic? It's important to plan around that. And this is not for uh, climate change, but this project was a hurricane machine that we made. It was really fun. Uh, we transported it to many different countries and it was for the film Geostorm. And we really made sure that we planned it out to be a very thrilling experience. We could have made it scarier if we wanted to, but we wanted this to be something that was almost silly, just so fun and wild, and whenever they'd hear about Geostorm again, it would bring them back that feeling of the fun thrill of this film. And lastly, incorporate as many senses as possible to help people remember your experience. Um, I, I think everybody is very focused on the visual aspect. It's a visual sense is very important, and then audio on top of that, we all know that can make it much more powerful. But then if you add something like scent, it really brings people back to your experience and creates a very strong memory for them. And then on top of that, if you can add some tactile senses like rain or wind or the ground shaking, then it will make your experience unforgettable. Make sure you user test and apply your learnings to make sure your experience is impactful. Otherwise, it might not be impactful at all. Uh, this is me user testing our beta. We're almost done. Uh, this is a, uh, well, this went live a few months ago, but this was a motion reactive soccer game, which is working pretty well at this point. But the thing is, you might notice that my kicks are really high. I'm using my toe to kick, and it's almost like a can-can dance. I'm not a soccer player. And apparently our developers are not soccer players either, because a lot of us tested this thing, and it was working well. But then we brought in an actual person who does play soccer to use our test for us, and he kicks with the side of his foot. Like you can see with this gentleman, he kicks how a re regular soccer player would kick, and it's a totally different biomechanical form. So we had to re-engineer this once we learned it and made sure that the actual audience can play it. So make sure you use your test, otherwise <laughs> they might not be able to play your game at all. And lastly, make sure you hide the technology. This of course depends on your experience. If you're an artist and you're creating an art piece about technology, then maybe you don't hide the technology, but if your experience is not about technology, then it's really helpful to hide it so people can be more present in the experience and not be like, oh, is that a connect? Or how are they doing that? What is that cable? It's nice to not think about those things and really allow your users to be transported and feel that emotional connection for the experience to be impactful. This quote is one that I really like by Arthur C. Clarke, and it reads, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I think that's one of the best things that we get to do uh, working in creative technology. Because we work with such novel technologies, we can create experiences, experiences for people that feel magical and feel unexplainable. So when you're designing an experience, I would highly recommend hiding the technology so you can really take advantage of that. And that's why I love working in creative technology. Thank you very much.